Hello Oracles! Well, Tesla pops back over $300 after the PPI report came in with a beat. So Tesla up over 3.5%, outperforming the market yet again, doing so well over the last couple of weeks, beating the market, just moving up, and we're heading into the Q3 production and delivery numbers, AI Day 2022. We are gaining some very nice momentum. And now before we get into anything, I just wanted to welcome the two newest members to the channel. We've got PowerPoint Paladin and Mac and Mand. Welcome both of you to the, to the channel as members. If anybody wants to join as a member as well, you can do so in the pinned comment down below. So I still talk about the gaps that we have down below. At this point, I really don't know. And talking with Clueless, discussing a lot of the options that are going on right now, seems like we are going to be having a battle around this $300 mark. So the questions that I will ask all pertain to the macro environment right now. We know Tesla-specific news is very good. We've got the Twitter overhang that is still kind of playing out at the moment. But other than that, everything is positive. So when it comes to the macro, I look at, well, yesterday, the market crashed hard after we got the CPI reading missing by two-tenths of a percent. Then all of a sudden, the market recovers today with the PPI beating by 0.1%. So what really changed over the last couple of days? Don't know how much market manipulation goes into this. Is this a bull trap? Is this a bear trap? Is this a bull trap inside of a bear trap? So many things going on with the macro at the moment. We still have the FOMC meeting going on next week. With the CPI data that we got coming in, with the PPI data today, we pretty much solidified that we are going to be getting a 75 basis point hike. I think at this point in discussing what could potentially pull down Tesla stock over the next two weeks going into Q3 production and delivery numbers, could be a few different things. Could be the railroads going on strike, could be the Fed maybe raising the rates 100 basis points versus 75, could be some sort of other black swan event, could be Russia and Ukraine you know, escalating to higher levels than it already is. So these few things could play out to bring us down, but other than that, I truly don't see anything else that could bring us down other than just pure market manipulation. And now quite personally, knowing how gaps fill nine out of 10 times, knowing we still have those two gaps down at 247 and 258, I would prefer that we fill these gaps going into the Q3 production and delivery numbers. Whether we get there or not, I don't know. I always look back to last year when we got the Hertz news, we got the Q3 numbers from last year, we skyrocketed up to all time highs, over $1,240, and we were all thinking we would never come down below $1,000. And then what happened? Elon sold. Stuff that we could not predict came up and brought the stock down. And then we got into January. We had the Q4 numbers come in. Awesome, we ran back up again. We're never coming back. And then the market crashed because they were already anticipating rates going up. So these things have happened. So I would like to fill the gaps because we had some big gaps down low that we never thought we would ever get back to to fill. And we filled them months later. So I would like to do it now before we get three, four months down the road and get some weird black swan event that brings us down again. That's my personal opinion. None of this could come to fruition at all, but just knowing how we have traded over the course of the past year, I just keep this in the back of my mind as a potential and I would rather not have it happen. So other things that we saw today, so with the run back up again, we got to higher volume levels. These volume levels now pushing to that 72 million shares trading hands. That's right back to that level that we were trading at previously. That now is going to be the new norm. Between 72 and 80 million shares trading hands, is going to probably be the norm for when we come to uh, trading volume. So when we're looking higher than that, and we're looking to try and break these levels like the 312 and 315, we're gonna need to see like 90 to 100 million shares trading hands. That's the kind of volume we need to break through those uh, resistance levels that are above us. And now we've also got the RSI pushing up to 58. For those of you who are not aware, the RSI is the relative strength index. Anything over 70 usually means that it's overbought and we're probably going to need to sell off. Anything that is under 30 usually means that we are oversold and some buying pressure is most likely going to come in and bring us back up. So 58 right in the middle, so we can kind of move either way. We're kind of in free reign at the moment. So last year when we went through the Hertz news, we ended up pushing over 90 in the RSI. So when you go over 70, it doesn't mean that you have to sell off. It's just an indicator because last year we hit that Hertz news, we blew up past 90. But as I said, shortly thereafter, Elon sold and the RSI came tumbling down. So 
These are just factors that I take a look at. And again, this weekend when I do a live stream, I'll go over all that with you guys who are new on the channel. And next week, I'm gonna start doing some of the screen shares so that you guys can see them all as well. And now over the next two weeks, we have a lot of analysts that are most likely going to be raising their estimates. Gary Black mentions this all the time. A lot of analysts wait to the last two weeks of a quarter, and then they start redoing all of their numbers, and they will change their estimates. Knowing all the numbers that we have gotten in, looking at Tesla Karav, looking at Troy Teslake, they have been increasing their estimates for production and deliveries, so I have no doubt that analysts are going to be doing the same. So we will probably see this over the next couple of weeks. This will be bullish for the stock, but again, I don't know how the macro is going to play into this when it comes to the FOMC meeting and railroad strikes and all of that stuff. We'll pay attention, we'll monitor this, but I always look at that underlying fundamental news. So some news that we had just gotten in recently was it looks like Tesla is going to be taking the 4680 battery machinery that is over in Berlin and moving it over to the U.S. So I think a reason for this is because they had mentioned about, you know, the EV tax credits and the battery credits that they can be getting. So having the batteries actually produced in the U.S. is going to be more beneficial for them. The way they're looking right now at the Model Y ramps over in Berlin, they were going to start those up sometime in October. Now, originally they had a third shift slated to come in on October as well. That has been pushed off until December. I don't know why. I don't know if there is some hiring delays. I don't know if maybe we had some mixed up news here and there in other places. But now looking at that, you know, they're not going to have as much staff over there. Maybe they were having trouble staffing. Now they can bring all of the batteries over here to the U.S. They can get the battery tax credit for them over here. And knowing that the 4680 batteries are going to be used in the Cybertruck, that means that they're going to be able to pump out as many batteries as possible. Now looking at the fact that, you know, Farzan was on Twitter just talking about the world is not ready for the margins we are going to see from the Cybertruck. And I think that's very true. So Tesla's going to want to pump out as many of these as possible. Thinking about the margins they have for the Model S and the Model X, those are significantly higher than the Y and the 3. So the Y and the 3 is still great margins, just not comparable to the S and the X. The Cybertruck, I have a feeling, is going to have margins as high as the X but the Cybertruck is going to be significantly higher volume. So just wrap your head around, let's say the Cybertruck producing half as many vehicles as the Model 3, but with margins of the X. That is mind-blowing numbers and profits coming out. So to have as many 4680 batteries getting pumped out as possible, to produce as many Cybertrucks as possible, is going to be key for next year. And it will be significantly more beneficial for the company to have 4680s put into the Cybertrucks than it will be into the Model Ys. Because the Model Ys, they already know what the profits are on those, but they cannot do the Cybertruck without the 4680. That is the plan, is the 4680 and the Cybertruck. We already have the 2170s in the Y. You don't have to put the 4680s in the Ys over in Berlin. They're good with the 2170s. Let them roll with that. Maybe later on down the road, as they get the Cybertruck ramped up and they can go back to 4680s over there, they're going to do that. But priority should be 4680s for the Cybertruck next year. And when they get those 4680s ramped up, we're going to get economies of scale as well. So the cost to produce the Cybertruck, which is something that Elon said was very important for them to do, is bring down the cost of the truck. The 4680s are going to do that. And when they get ramped up to full volume, that is going to take a significant chunk of that cost down. So some estimates from analysts are saying that you can knock off two-thirds of the battery cost when it comes to the battery tax credit over here in the U.S. So very beneficial for the Cybertruck price coming down due to the 4680s. And now some other news that we got out of Ford was Ford is looking to, by the end of October, October 31st, they have told their dealers that they need to decide whether they are going to be an EV dealer or not. That is the deadline. So they're either, go either going to sell EVs in their dealerships or they are not. If they are, they have to make a significant investment, one to $1.2 million for EV charging infrastructure and all of the tech that they need for the EVs. So Ford has laid it down. Kudos to Ford for doing this and saying, look, this is how we need to operate. They have also told these dealerships that they have to sell them with no haggle pricing, just like Tesla does. This is the price, you buy it at this price. That is it. There's no haggling. Customer's not going to bring it down. You can't do dealer markups. That is it. Ford sets the prices. You sell them at these prices. So dealerships have until October 31st to make that decision. So with that said, you know, Jim Farley was talking about how they're still $2,000 behind Tesla when it comes to their vehicles. 
Jim Farley was looking over at Norway. Norway right now is leading the world with EVs. Tesla is very prominent over there. And Tesla in Norway has dealerships of a sort. It's, you know, dealerships, but it's a direct sale e uh, dealership. So whereas Ford right now still has that middleman dealership situation going on. So it's going to be slightly different because it's not going to be the direct sales, but that is still the model that Ford is looking at going. So they'll still have that middleman with the dealership, but it's going to be more of a direct sales middleman. So we'll see how this works out for Ford. Again, of all the legacy automotive makers, I think Ford is going to do the best. They have found their niche market. They have accepted what they need to do for EVs. They actually look at Tesla and say, Tesla is doing things the way we need to do them. So let us do things Tesla's way, but in our own way. So I think that is going to be very successful for Ford and why they should be able to move forward through all of this. So we'll see what the other legacy automotive makers do, but at least on Ford's side of things, I think of all the legacy automotive makers, they stand one of the best chances. And one other question I wanted to answer, and a few of you have asked me, you know, dollar cost averaging, what that means. So dollar cost averaging just means that you are investing on a regular basis, whether it's daily like I do, weekly, monthly, whatever it is, it is a regular occurrence of you investing into the company. So you're not trying to time the market, you're just saying, all right, every Friday I get paid and I'm putting in $100 or whatever it is. So some people can do it fractionally. If you cannot do it fractionally, some people just save up money. I know some dollar cost averaging strategies I have heard from some of you are, as soon as you have enough money to buy one share, you buy it, regardless of the timing of it, regardless of anything. As soon as you have enough money, you buy a share. So all of these are different great strategies to have. Everybody has to do their own due diligence and do what's best for their own investments, but that is what dollar cost averaging is. So I'm just picking a schedule and I'm investing accordingly, not trying to time the market. That's what dollar cost averaging is. So again, for those of you who are asking, I hope that answered your question and feel free to reach out to me in the comments for any more specific answers because I will definitely answer them over there. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How do you feel about Tesla moving the 4680 battery machinery over to the US? Do you think it was just because of the battery tax credits? Do you think it's for the Cybertruck? What reasoning do you think is behind all of this as to why Tesla is making this move? Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support and feedback. If you have not subscribed, please do so down below. Sign yourself up for notifications in the pinned comment. If you'd like to sign up for a membership, you can do so down there. I am over on Twitter at OracleTim1. I share all the latest Tesla news, pertinent stock market information, and all of my daily trades. We do have a Discord chat. That link is down in the description. And if you'd like to support the channel any further, we do have a Patreon. That link is also in the description. Thank you so much. Have a great one.